Remember the four guineas that Gary caught in the wild that somebody dumped? Well, now there's seven and more. An absolutely beautiful day. A little bit hazy, not too hot. This is Robbie from Southern California and it is the middle of August. So we're ready for doing a garden tour. I'm gonna to start in the bird garden because this is what's so important to me. I noticed that the birds are really struggling for food. Here we had that big super bloom, but that's long over from March and they have been eating anything they could find. A lot of goldfinches have been eating squash leaves. I mean, just everything and anything. So I let a lot of the plants go to seed and now they've emptied the seed out. So I'm also providing them everywhere on my deck and wherever I can, even here, lettuce seed. Because lettuce seed is so important to a lot of the goldfinches and they eat here. We have the lesser goldfinches. So what they prefer here in Southern California is the finest seed they can find. But in the meantime, I've been doing some work in here because I want this to look really nice. But most importantly, not only grow food for me, but grow seeds and food for nature. So let's kind of walk around here and then I don't know where we'll end up, but we'll kind of go through little by little and see what's been done. But keep in mind, we've been really hot. So I've been, I'm gonna say hiding in the house, but that's not actually true. Doing projects and other things in different places in the shade and not working that much in the garden because I planted some stuff and some things are growing good and some things are not. And you'll see as we walk around. So let's kind of look around the bird garden and see what I've been doing here. So as you can see, there's still a little bit of chaos. In other words, I haven't gotten to this, but I have gotten to a lot. The tomatoes in the trough are doing fantastic. Tommy the tomato is eh, a little bit wimpy. I kind of trimmed down a little bit to get some more airflow around it. But remember, that tomato plant came out right here in the soil, just came out of growing on its own. It's a volunteer. And with volunteers, I have been lucky enough to have most of them great, but once in a while, they're not that great. So we'll see it as it goes. I think there's one tomato on it right now, and that's about it. But boy, do we have tons of dragon fruit flowers starting, and they're getting bigger. If you saw them two weeks ago, you can see how much bigger they are. So it won't be long before we start having fruit. I mean, right here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Holy mackerel, there are so many. So I want to be able to get this chair out, clear this area, because I want to be able to walk through the garden. So let's kind of keep going. See, this is chocolate mint. Remember that. Growing out, and that's about as far as it goes. I've had it in different places, and it stays contained. Even here, the orange mint stays pretty contained. That's orange mint. Keep, keep in mind, these totes here are about eight years old now. Seven, eight years old. They're still doing really good. That one, too, is an old one. So as we're walking through here, you can see so much more I've got to do. Look at that. There is tons of dragon fruit in there as well. Among the lemon verbena. Look at all through here. Oh my goodness. We're going to have a lot. And this year I'm going to tool it because some of the house finches have found it and they've been going through it. This is where I want to concentrate on working. I want to get this all set up for the birds. I did bring some lettuce out here, and this is the lettuce seed that they happen to absolutely love. And I want to grab some of it, and as they're eating it, throw it on the bottom, keep it well watered, and there is already some lettuce growing down there, because all I have to do is grab some pieces out, little tiny plants, they move so easy, and I can put one single one in a pot or two, and I'll get beautiful lettuce. That is a type of romaine lettuce. I bought it once on eBay. They told me I'll never need it again, and no kidding, I only needed it once, and now it just reseeds itself everywhere. Isn't this pretty? I took that apart yesterday and completely redid it. Kind of in a MacGyver way. So I've wrapped this with multiple layers of plastic straw. Like I do my pumps, just keep splitting them and putting them there. I should have started with tape, but I didn't. I hope I don't have to take it apart. And then I just wired it on. I don't know if it's going to be tight enough, but we'll see. But that's how I do my other pumps. Really, the whole thing needs to be replaced. See how that goes. The pipe is broken, this big one. I bought it years ago now at the thrift store for $20. And what I did was, you know how I make my solar fountains with the straw? Well, that's what I did. Down there, it's straw. 
the pipe has to be completely replaced. I don't know how you would do it out of an old one. You'd have to take the metal pipe out and everything. It's just going. So I wrapped it just like I do my solar fountains. The new way, because a couple years ago I used to buy the tubing and now I'm doing a lot with straws and it is working fantastic. So I got that done and then I want to go through here and figure out where I want plants because I've got these plants and I've got water features tucked away and you can't even see them. So I've got to redo that. Move this, so excited. It's looking so good. I'm going to get some geraniums around the bottom in small pots. It'll look really good here. And here's my flowers. I almost tilled my flowers. I didn't water them good last night. Let me step back. Found them this morning all drooped over. I thought, well, that's the end of them. And nope, they popped back up. So in a matter of about three hours, they popped up. I'm working out here a long time. This is still going to be moved. And this I want to keep. It's just a hybrid that came up. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So here I haven't gotten to anything. And I'm just clearing little by little so I can walk. This is what I worked on the other day, doing fantastic. And then here, that's what I'm working on. You know, I talked about this for what, three years? I was gonna redo it because I used to grow all kinds of things in there. This is the dog crates that we got once. They threw them out at a big pet store. They redid their grooming facility and they took all these dog crates. And I somebody told me some of them were worth $1,000 a piece. They threw them out by the dumpster and wanted them out. So Gary went and picked them all up. I'm not sure what he's doing with the grades. He's probably using it for fencing because the top had these great, well, it wasn't the top. That would have been the front. And then there was big metal doors with grades, heavy grades in steel. So he's doing something else with that. But we set these up and we use them for raised beds. The problem is with a raised bed, after a while, the soil compresses, it collapses, and you've got to get it out. It, in the, you know, in the mother nature, it doesn't do that because she's building constantly on the top. So soil is constantly changing the compost. But when you're in a raised bed, at times, no matter what you've got in there, it could be a year, it could be three years, four years, you have to get in there, take everything out and start over. So what I'm going to do here to make my life easier, it has collapsed way down, but it's draining good still. So I'm fortunate with that is I have cleaned out this bed completely. I took out, there was a water fountain, believe it or not, there was that one in there that nobody ever saw. Pulled that one out, decided to leave that one hybrid brassica because it looks interesting, trimmed it way back. And I loaded it with all kinds of stuff, as you can see. I'm gonna let it dry for a few days because here is a problem. I've got all the different brassicas in there. I've got lemon verbena in there. I've got purple tree color chopped up in there. I even have geranium. See all that? Been picking that all up and I've been throwing it in there. So what is my biggest nightmare? Yes, if I cover it too quickly, I'm gonna end up growing all that stuff. I'll have geranium in there and hopefully I didn't drop any mint in there because if I did, this is spearmint that grows like a weed. Chocolate mint doesn't. Orange mint, not too bad, but spearmint is like a wild mint. It just wants to grow everywhere. Uh, but I don't think there's mint. I was very careful not to get any mint in there, but you know, as careful as you can be, you know how things are. So I was climbing in there. I could have had a little piece on my shoe or something, but the biggest nightmare would be I'll have geraniums growing in there, all kinds of the brassicas, tree collars growing the purple. If that happens, I'll deal with it. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to top it. There's a lot of soil around here. I can use soil from the ground, just put a layer on top. And then what I'm going to do is not plant directly in there. If something grows in there as a volunteer, I'll leave it. But I'm gonna use these buckets. Now these two green buckets have big holes on the bottom. So the plants, whatever I plant in there can send their roots out and I will put them in there. But first I've got to top it and get it nice and smooth and straight. And then I may put other, you know, plastic pots in there as far as flower pots or, any type of pot and get them all lined up in there. I have much better luck growing when I have plants in pots because we're in Southern California, we get so hot and dry and in pots, they get direct watering. I know there's water in there. It works for me much better and I can keep control on it. And I can even put potatoes in buckets in there. Just grab them, tip them and get my potatoes and put them back. So there's a lot I can do with that. So once I'm done with this, I will start with that one. Look at my pride and joy. Remember that? It's still there. It's just, it doesn't look good. It's very, very sad. But once, you know, I trim this back, I'm gonna do some more cuttings off of it. It will do good. Look at this, a tomato plant, a volunteer. Again, 
Will it be like a beautiful cherry tomato? It might, or will it end up being a plant that just doesn't grow a lot? You never, never know. So that's what's going on here. And I'll clean up the angel, another find at a thrift store. I got once for $20, $25. I liked it. it needs a good scrubbing. It grows a lot of algae. And I think I'm gonna end up moving my angel somewhere else too. Maybe I'll move her here and put pots around it. And this way, if I wanna do any photographing, I can do it from there because I can sit. See, I've got a table there and some chairs. I can sit there and I can quietly watch the birds, observe what's coming in, all the different species. We have now, what, about 60 small birds that come through here all through the year, different types. Not one species, 60 small species of birds. And I can sit there and catch that photograph when I have time to sit, that's the problem. I used to sit more and it seems like the more gardening I do, the less sitting I'm doing. This tree collard is, yes, growing in this tote. At some point, it's not gonna make it and it has not left a tote because the holes are up above. I don't know if you can see them there, but anyways, I don't know if you can see the holes. Yeah, it's right there. It's actually the hole cracked a little bit. It's probably trying to send roots out. So it's doing okay and eventually I'll do something with it, but I'm gonna have tons of cuttings. See all these? I could take this if I wanted to, cut it at the base there, drop it in the ground anywhere or another flower pot. Oh, get about 10, 15, maybe 10, 12 inches in the soil and it will reroot and take most of the leaves off the top because you don't want the trunk to lose water as it's trying to build a root system. I've done it, it works really good. So that's a regular tree colored. And then you can see this purple one that's struggling here. It's just falling over, it's everywhere. You can see the branches on that are purple. So what else is going on? I've got the four o'clocks, they're dying back. I think it's the heat, they got really big and they also don't like the heat, so they grew really good until now. And all this will be cleaned up at some point too. And let's see, the papayas, I don't think there's any flowers yet. It's still struggling. I mean, it really, really got hit hard this winter. And then with the heat, I don't know. We'll have to see how it's doing. But all in all, it looks really good. It's green. That one has a lot of yellow leaves, but look at the other one in the middle. Ideally, I could take out some of the ones like this one because this one's actually coming way out. But I think I'm just gonna leave it, see what happens, because that is struggling. And once I get here, I'm gonna surround it with something. Gary was gonna build like a cement feature around it so we could build the soil up. And I'm thinking of doing it just with pots and maybe a tote. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens, because this is like really the only papaya I've got. I've got one in the bird garden, struggling a little one, but I've got some papayas growing. So that's going really good. And then here, this is exciting. I've got the sink that I can use, and this is some geraniums that I bought, and I'm working with cuttings. Look at this, coolantro. Let me show you. My seedlings, I got them outside, and I was very worried, but it is doing really good. This is gonna throw seeds. And I know a lot of you who know what coolantro is, is saying, no, cut it off and let it grow. But you know what? They weren't cheap to find the seeds. And I think I'd like to have one set of seeds for myself to at least try. And then I'll cut it off later, but it's already growing new growth here. Then this was a little tiny one I put in here and now it's starting to get new growth. And look, new growth on that one. So I am gonna get the rest of my seedlings out. I'll probably use potting soil and then mix some regular soil in there like I did with this and see how it goes. But all in all, I still have to go through the garden and get all the seed heads off, see this? Now the plants will come back, cut these way back, and all those tiny leaves will turn into big, beautiful leaves. So I'm working on it. But everything I cut off is important to me because as you saw in that you know, dog crate that I'm using for a raised bed, all that's gonna turn into compost. I tend to call it soil. So let's keep going and let's go out and see what's going on, what's going on here. Oh, I trimmed my moringa down. I think you might've seen that. It's doing a nice little comeback. It's an older tree, it's right there, but it, it's okay. All right, so let's go out here. Like I said, we're still working on things. We've been doing a lot, so we're kind of working in different areas. So I've got stuff piled. I'm sure you've piled before too. Let's see, um, back here, I've got polka dot plant. Isn't that something? I know I still want to get to this. I want to make a bird feature out of that, the chair, because I don't sit in those chairs. When I get in those chairs, I can't get out. It's not my type of chair. 
So now let's look and see what's going on in here. And here, I've got a squirrel issue. A squirrel started coming in and chewing up some of my plants. So I draped some tulle over because they don't like tulle at all. So that's gonna get rid of the squirrel. I see it comes in and takes a few nips, but that can come off and there's, oh my goodness. It's another big one back here. Oh good, they didn't touch that one. So I'm gonna get those two squash off and use that for dinner. They're small and they'll be beautiful just to slice up. Throw in a frying pan with some butter and that is my favorite way to eat squash. And then of course I've got to freeze a lot. And real quick over here, I'm almost ready to harvest my potatoes and get them back in. This is one you saw me harvest about three months ago. And the ones that are peeking out that are still green, not still green, turning green, they're gonna go right back in. So I'll take the good ones that are underneath, then I'll put the green ones back, they'll grow. That's onions I gotta get out. And that's just some a sunflower that came up. And look, I've got seeds. Look at that, isn't that something? There's more onions. See, they're peeking through, they're small. And then I've got some little onions in there. It died back from the heat, but I still have onions. Look at the tomatoes. I want you to see this. Not just the tomatoes. Look at that. I'm not even sure what type that is. Look at the zinnias. They have been so big. I could not pull that out. I mean, technically, I should have put something else in there because I was growing food in there, and I thought, you know, I don't need to. It's just too beautiful, so I left it, and I've been picking strawberries. And yes, look at this. A tomato plant growing in with my strawberries. I thought, you know what? I'll leave it. So I'm leaving that. So I've draped the tool here to deter that squirrel. And it seems to be working. He hasn't touched any of my tomatoes. So they're doing really good. Then I've got an eggplant, which is going to grow really slow right now. And once the tomato plant kind of fizzles out later on, it will slow down. The eggplant will take over. I've had that happen before. And then back here, I've got a pepino. This is just a cutting. I took it off of that one because that's an older plant already. Probably root out. And put it here and look how beautiful. Just stuck it in the back. This is a tomato plant that came up. Then I also threw in some onions. We still had onions left in a tray. So I threw them in and they're doing quite good. This I just planted. I, we bought this and we got it half price that time. This is the midnight snack. One of our favorite. And it was like the last one sitting here the other day. And I thought we can't do this. So I put it in here. So now it's in here and I'll have to make sure I get some good compost tea for it. But in the meantime, I'll just throw some leaves around it. And this one I didn't cut off because I might actually do a cutting off of that and move it. And then I've got more onions in here. And then this is, like I said, the pepino. I've got the peppers growing in the back and I better move them. This is all cobras coming up and I've got to get those out and give them their own pot. And then this one is for my pizza garden. And it's already starting to grow peppers. And this is a small black cobra. There's too much in there. Red vein sorrel. And then along the bottom, I start different geraniums. And I think I'll move some of these into the bird garden because they're all different colors all down here. See in the buckets? This way, when I'm watering the totes, it waters the buckets. And then I can move them when I want. So I'm going to move that. This is a pepper plant. I had to wrap it. Oh, no. He ate it. No, he didn't. No, 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 he didn't. I thought he ate it. It's fine. Something came along and I'm thinking it's a squirrel. Chewed the whole base of that plant. Not the base itself, but all the leaves off. So I don't know, but I have caught a squirrel. I'll show you when we get to it on camera. So I know I've got a squirrel issue and then I've got a watermelon plant. These came up, you know, from our seeds from last year. And I think I've got, there's, there's a watermelon here. So I've got a watermelon there. When it starts to throw enough watermelon, two or three in there, I might trim it back and stop it. Then I'll get nice, sweet watermelon. And they, they also are ready quicker. So if you leave too many on the plant, I found out, it could take 90 days, 60 to 90 days. But when I've kept only one or two on the plant, you can get it in almost 30 days, they'll be ripe. It really speeds it up because they're putting everything, all the energy into the one. So I'll keep an eye on that. And then I've got my milkweed. I'm done with butterflies. I've opened it up. I haven't even seen as many laying eggs. So they do that more in the spring and early summer. And now they come through, they're probably laying occasionally. I'm sure there's a few on there, but I'll let them all do their thing. I've got a, look at this, a tomato plant came up, volunteer. This was really not thought out that much. I had a, you know, a couple squash in there and tomatoes, but I was doing a whole lot more and then I don't know what happened. So I kind of let it do its thing and it's still okay. I had a, you know, a really good time watching the butterflies come in. I really enjoy watching those zinnias. Look how big they are. So 
keep an eye on the butterflies and things coming to that. Then here is the hummingbird's lunch. It's just sitting here right now until I figure out where I'm going to put it. I bought a whole bunch once. When I say a whole bunch, I think there were three I bought. And I repotted some of them and put them around. So I want to move them. Another turn to plant. Nothing's going on there. I'm done. I want to clean up. But this one's doing fantastic. This one, nobody's bothering. And I also wrapped it with tulle. This keeps squirrels and rats away. They don't like the feel of it. Now, it's got to be wrapped better. It should be completely around. And then you leave the top open so your pollinators can get in there. And don't kid yourself. When they go in something, they normally know how they got in so they can get out. And then, so that, that's working out really good. I got to get that pepper off. We keep picking peppers. And then here is my pizza garden. Look at this. Oh, it went to, this was not here yesterday. I actually trimmed some of the leaves off last night. This is a mustard plant, a purple mustard, and it's done. See, it's got powdery mildew. Now, why does that purple mustard have powdery mildew? I didn't plant it. came up as a volunteer. Because it only gets sun in the late afternoon. So it's too damp for it. The environment is damp, and it would not normally get you know, powdery mildew if it was in, you know, more sunlight, but I left it. It doesn't matter. It shaded my little tricolored sage down there that's not thrilled with a ton of sun. And the newer leaves aren't that bad. See, I can pick the new leaves and eat them. But as they sit, they develop powdery mildew. And as you can see, it doesn't stop them from growing. Then I've got the rosemary. I got, oh, I got to clip off all the flowers because you don't want to leave the flowers unless you want the pollinators to have it, but the plant will fizzle out. So you want to get the flowers off and keep it trimmed so the basil will keep going. But I've got sage. This is perfect for pizza. I haven't made pizza for a little while. I better do it soon. Got the tricolored sage, the regular sage. Uh, that is just columbine. That's a flower plant. I've got to find the place for it. And, and that's in its own pot. And that isn't from that pot. I planted it in there. And then I got oregano down there. And then, of course, the rosemary that I put in a cutting is still in the original little tiny pot down there. Isn't that something? It's doing fine. And that's where it's going to stay. And then my peppers are just starting to take off. Also, the bottom ones got attacked by something. And I think it's the same squirrel that's been going through and chewing on leaves. But I do have some Fresno peppers that are getting, well, they are close. They are ready to pick. So that's what's going on here. I haven't planted in anything in there yet. I've got all fall to do that. So that's what's going on here. And so let's go walk up the wall and see what's going on down there. Oh, and I was going to tell you I have more papaya. These are papayas. I threw them in here with a little, a little tiny bit of soil. And look at this. i got to figure out where to put all these. I don't want that many, but I'm going to have to do something with them soon. All right, so now here. Really nothing new down here at all because we had a lot going on. We, were, we had the porch we were fixing, and then things were moved, and now they've been moved back, and then the tree they took out, and they were dumping everything down here to chip all the wood chips from the tree. So what you saw last month, you can go back and see, is exactly the same. I mean, there's a few tomatoes growing over here, and they came up. These are also volunteers. I never got to them. So I've got a lot to clean up. There's one more batch of onions left in that tray that Gary had bought. Malabar spinach coming. Wow, that's Malabar spinach. I'm looking at the tomatoes. Holy mackerel, that is doing good. Better make sure I water that really good. And I've got tomatoes here. And then of course, this is my black cobra. Boy, that plant is over three years old. In a little pot, plastic pot, doing well. But that's it. You know, I've got some squash down here. I think there's, this is uh, green sorrel, more Malabar spinach coming up. That's just the zucchini, but look at this. I've got to get this shredded and frozen right away. It's still trying to grow more. It will be growing more. And then I've got just plants that I try to start rooting. And I want to grow all lettuce in those upside down planters. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that right now. This is Malabar spinach growing up. All right, so nothing, like I said, nothing new here. And then, oh, that's right. This is the apple ice that fell when they were doing the tree. I could stick it somewhere. Maybe I will grab it and stick it on the hillside. I don't know. So nothing new. We're still trying to get the tote set up where they were. Gary and the guys, the tree guys moved everything. And so this has been an issue. So something went through and ate all my baby cucumber plants. All of them. I'll show you. They were just beautiful. Everything was growing great. Look, I've got a cucumber here. I've got a pick. I've had others I've been picking. Uh, oh, look, 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 look. I gotta get behind there. Look at that. 
Look how big that one is back there. I've got more coming up. I gotta get that one. Otherwise the plant will stop producing. Keep that in mind. When a cucumber plant thinks it's been really successful, they're done. So I've gotta get that taken off fairly quick. And then I've got a bean. I'm not sure, I think this is a purple runner bean. And then here is where they eat up my plants. So it is gonna, you know, it may make a comeback. I could have put some tool here, but the squirrel ate up all this, ate up all this, ate up all this. So yep, the squirrel had a real field day. And how do I know? I caught it on camera. I went back and decided I had three days to go back because I knew when this happened. I looked and looked and sure enough, the squirrel came over and did its thing. Nothing here, and I'm still not sure what I'll do, but when it's not so hot in the fall, I'll think about how I wanna set this up. Maybe I'll just plant directly in the ground. Maybe I'll set up more totes. I mean, I did play around with the plastic bag, and though it's working, when this thing starts to fall apart, it will be a nightmare to pick up the pieces. But look how nice the tomato plant's growing in a grocery bag. And these are potatoes, probably ready to harvest because they're turning yellow. Especially when plants start to die back when they're potato plants, that means they're ready, they're done. They're putting all their energy into the tubers, which is the potatoes. And then this is just, um, and that's when you wanna start thinking about getting them out. This is just Swiss chard, it's kind of a ready green one. It's gone the seed, and then this is all my zucchinis. A tomato plant that came up in the back. Oh, there is a zucchini there. Oh, good, okay, so I've got zucchini there. Never got to that, just walking onions. This one started to die back, but now it's making a comeback, so that's good. So we'll see, it's even got little, I just saw some fruit on it. I don't know where I saw it, but I did see it. Oh, they're right there, I think there's one. And then I've got all this, see, I've got powdery mildew, even with our heat. Yes, I water at night. Some people say, oh, when you water at night, you get powdery mildew. Let me tell you something. When you water in the morning, you get powdery mildew. It depends on how you are, your temperature, your climate. And when we get up in the morning, in the summer now, like this morning, it was so foggy that that is what's gonna cause my powdery mildew. And there could be different varieties of powdery mildew. So some people may get it, some people won't on their plants. And then sometimes you can go through all these different zucchinis to find that one plant never gets touched with it and other plants do. And then here is the ponds. I can't do much with them right now. So I just kind of enjoy them right at this moment the way they are because we've got a raccoon that comes through here and takes a swimming lesson every night. So I haven't overdone anything in here. Figured I'm not gonna put a ton of energy in here when I have so many more other things to do. Oh, we're burping, I've gotta get water in here. I, I, this is one of my retired ones. Yeah, I know you need water. And it's retired because I'm working on other fountains. So I figured I'd bring it here so the Orioles, let me, give me a minute. This way the Orioles can come through to the hillside. And they'll hopefully go into my tomato plant and look for hornworms. See if I can do it. I'm do I should have done this when I got off. But I don't like to listen to any of my fountains burping because I don't want to ruin my, you know, my pumps. It's not good to leave them dry, and now it should it should start to... I know what's going on now. All right, let me turn the water off. Give me a minute. Okay, got the water off. What's happening now is this thing is covering it. It needs all the sunlight it can possibly get, plus I'm standing in front of it. So it should... There it goes, starting. Not getting enough sunlight. The shadow on it. And that's the only problem with the round ones. Sometimes the cups I put on create too much shadow at certain times of the day. So all it will do is burp. See how it's going up and down? And then eventually, at that point, it will... You know, I can take that off. I could. I don't know. I can't do it. One, there we go. It's still burping. Oh, because I'm standing in front of it. I think I will leave it off. The birds will find it. They can still stand on that. I don't need a cup. I don't know if a hummingbird's gonna come here and take a bath, but that will work perfect for the Orioles. They'll hear the water, they'll come here, and hopefully they'll turn around and go, oh, tomato plants. I know what's on there. And then they will look through and hopefully find some hornworms. We have found three, no, maybe four this year. So they, they don't get them all, but you know, if we find them, we kind of toss them off. Probably don't find them all. Here's watermelon coming up. So it's a funky little, you know, style to it, but you know what? They still taste good. 
And then I've got this one. So I'm looking at the plant. This is one plant with two watermelon. And see this one? It's stopped. And what I am really getting ready to do is come out here and hack off some of the watermelon. I can take off the tips, I can put them in water, and then this will root. About 60, 70% of them will root and you can replant them. I know we're kind of late in the season, depending on where you are. We still can be warm up until November. So it could be okay for us, but I really, instead of me telling you, I should just go do it. Just cut them, root them, and get them planted. And I want to stop it because I want this to take off. If I trim it back, I'll cut it to here. You want to make sure they have leaves on them. So you cut it to around, oh, let's say cut it here because it's hanging there. And then trim the rest of it back. Like I said, this is one plant. Then all the energy goes into that watermelon and the other one. It can do two. And they'll be ready probably in the next two, three weeks. They're really, really fast. Once this tendril turns brown, that's when they say you can pick it. I tend to wait until the tendril is brown after about one to two weeks and it's as so sweet as can be. You can't make a mistake because if you cut it too early, it will not be sweet and there's no going backwards. If you wait a little longer, one to two weeks, you're perfect. You can't lose. Even if you could have cut it two weeks earlier on the plant, I have found it's perfect and it doesn't go bad. So keep that in mind. That's up to you. Okay, so my tomatoes are doing fabulous. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? And then I've got an eggplant that is starting to take off. So this will grow better once the tomato, tomatoes kind of fizzle out later. And that's okay. I've got a zucchini plant. I think this is yellow squash trying to make a comeback. Nothing in there, but I do see a volunteer. And having such a dark stem, it's a dark type of tomato probably. I may leave that. And of course, I've got the yellow squash. It's been nipped on. I can pick that and still use it. I don't think there's anything in here. Oh, there's squash seeds. You know, I gotta go back and look at my notes. I think I threw some seeds in there. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then I've got all my beautiful sun gold tomatoes. And a lot of these were cuttings. Remember, I only bought one plant and I did a ton of cuttings. I'm really excited about that. So that's doing good. I've got the brads, which is this one. And it is true brads. It's not a hybrid. Well, it's their developed hybrid, but it's bought seeds. That's doing good. And then I've got back there, the little brownie looking one. That is, what is the, um, Oh my goodness, black, oh, I can't think of what it's called. I'm gonna have to go back and think about that. Wait a minute, black cherry. It's very good when you label black cherry. Gary loves those. I actually like the sun golds the best. And then I've got more sun golds here. And then in here, I just have some red vein sorrel and I'm rooting in both containers here. Some more geraniums, I got a strawberry plant back there. And then here, I've got more tomatoes growing in here. Look at that. Is that gorgeous? So that's what's going on here. And then let me spin around here. And oh, my trees is going. Oh, the birds are sitting up there watching me. All this is doing really well. And then my turmeric came up. I think the turmeric is in too much shade. I have ideas. I got up this morning and I thought, I have an idea. I think I want to take the turmeric and move it a little bit, you know, out of the shade. It's in too much shade take that table and make that a craft table. I've got more crafts I want to work on. And this would be the perfect spot because I will be able to enjoy the pepper tree. Hopefully it won't break a limb on me. And if it does, I do one of two things. I either run as fast as I can if I hear it cracking. It's only done it once and it went on that side. Or you drop flat to the ground because I don't think it would hit the ground that flat. At least not a big branch, so I don't know. But there's enough stuff in there, it would probably catch it. I think it'd be a nice place because I would like to stand and do the cement work I want to do and I can use even that table. The problem is that table, a squirrel can jump on there. One, two, three, or a rabbit. I've seen the rabbit go on the bench and then go up on the top. And at that point, they can get inside. So that's why I didn't set it up on that table, but I might anyways. But I could use that table and then use this one for crafts because this way I could stand. Sometimes I find it easier to do cement work standing. And if I get tired, I'm gonna sit down, take a break, enjoy nature, and then go back and stand again. So let's see, what did I miss here? You know what, let's go take a look at the front yard and then I think we'll wrap this up. Is this not beautiful? This has turned out this year to be my favorite garden. It's the easiest to water, takes me less than two minutes. 
I can't think of anything else to say. I mean, it's just my favorite garden. It's just growing perfect. I have gotten so much squash out of here that I better freeze it. I still have some of it in the house. Let's go in the front yard. Oh, and I make my compost tea there. Isn't that beautiful? This is beautiful here. The back side of the rainbow garden. Look at Gary finds stuff in the trash and brings it home, but I think he's gonna build something with it or raise bed out of it because this is metal. So that's the back side of the rainbow garden. Isn't that beautiful? Look at all the seeds. We're gonna have milkweed growing everywhere. I've collected a ton of it. Some of my neighbors want, and I'm getting some of it to them too. Look at that. Tomatoes are too big. They need a little trimming. Anything that's really yellow, the plant's not using, you'll wanna trim it off. All right, let's continue on to the front yard. That was a pair of gold finches eating lettuce seed heads. Isn't that cute? Yep, more zucchini growing in a little flower pot. I'm gonna put lettuce along here with those upside down planters. I'll cover them with tulle. We're here, it looks the same. As you know, I have given up on my tomato project. I was not happy with the tomato plants. I still have that one that something ate or did something to and it doesn't move. Got that one sitting there. I'm growing better flowers and onions than anything else. Look at the flowers. And then this one came up as a volunteer. See, it had worm damage. And now the newer leaves are coming in a little nicer. I know I let this thing, I opened it up is what I did. And I should have kept it covered, but it doesn't matter. Not real happy with the tomato project. I didn't like the tomato plants. The rosy finch, I get far more off a trimmed, if you wanted to trim, a cherry type tomato than I ever will off of that, I can see. So it's kind of like to eat your own. So nothing done here. See, the problem is it's very shaded here. So it's either take down these trees, which I will not because it brings in so much nature. There is just amazing animals in there. Got a tree squirrel that lives up there. I've got so many birds, parrots and all kinds of stuff come in there. I don't want to take that down. Isn't that beautiful? So for now, I'm not worried about it, but I am going to work on my table. That's going to be interesting. And then, see, isn't that beautiful? Cheap dish pans. We are going to get more into that very soon. There's a table I can move to the back. I wonder if my turmeric would be okay here. Here's the problem. This is why I haven't moved the turmeric from the back, but I could try one or two. This gets morning sun and then it's shaded during the afternoon and this gets more sun. You would think it's so close it would be the same, but it's not. It makes a big difference. You've got an overhang and you've got a whole different microclimate there against the wall out of the sun in the afternoon. And this one being out in the open has another climate. And what good, works good here is garlic chives and red vein sorrel. No, it doesn't really matter. I can put a lot of different things there. It's possible the turmeric would be good. You know what? You talked me into it. I will bring one or two of the turmerics from under the pepper tree here. If they do good for the next week, I will move them all here and then make my craft table. Look at this. This is potatoes. This is for my daughter. She went and bought all this stuff. Yukon Gold. My daughter's really big on potatoes. She planted the microtubers and all kinds, including the Viking potatoes. She got like 10, 20 pounds. She keeps harvesting potatoes. I'll put the link to her channel so you can check it out because boy, she's amazing on the stuff she's growing in a little city backyard. And we'll be able to harvest them soon. I really don't want all this personally and it grows everywhere because it's gonna take from the potatoes. And then I've got celery coming up. I haven't really done much in here. I'm, oh gosh, there's a squash I didn't get to. But I'm working on it, more zucchini. Oh no, that's cocosil. You see that? You know what this is growing in? A little dish pan, keep in mind. These things are less than $3 and they're movable. Let's take a look at the ginger and turmeric because I am very excited with that. Now I think we'll wrap this up. And I have a greenhouse. After all this time, I took all my junk out of the window and it was junk. And now I've got house plants growing in there. I've got a very interesting tomato plant there growing in there that I have to find the place for because it's called a traveler's. Now my daughter's growing some. So far she hasn't produced anything, but I really wanted that tomato. It's a very special plant and it's very hard to get to tomatoes. Now, if I bought the seeds from somebody, 
that had it growing in their yard with other tomatoes, I won't get the true travelers. And I want the travelers. And you'll never know because they're really hard to get here. This is the ginger turmeric table. Okay, now the ginger's not doing as good. I, I thought something was eating this ginger, but nothing is eating it. It is coming up. I can uncover it. I put these wire baskets. So by the way, these baskets are fabulous. And you get these at the dollar stores, any dollar store. Let me just put it here. They all carry it. If you go to a regular dollar store, they're a dollar. I've seen them for a dollar at some of the dollar stores. Dollar Tree gets them in, they're a dollar 25. They are so cheap and you can protect your plants with them. All right, see, it isn't. There was something not growing and it, was, it wasn't that, so I'm not worried about it. This is ginger. See how the leaves are skinny? They're taking off and they had a real slow time this year. I guess we just didn't get warm enough at night for them, but they're finally starting to grow. And then this is all turmeric. This is the black turmeric or blue. See the stripe? So I've got this one, this one, and this one. These are just some flowers. And then I've got my stevia in the back because stevia doesn't like a whole lot of sun. Don't believe the label that says they need full sun. If you're in a hot area, they will not be happy in the full sun. I've actually lost my fir first ones because I went by what it said on the directions and well, Sometimes directions aren't always right, especially when it comes to plants, because the problem is they don't know your climate. So then you've got to kind of step back, try it. If it doesn't work, change things up. But the turmeric is taking off. And then here, I did not plant anything. But Robbie, we see something. I know, isn't that something? The tomato plant came up on its own. Look at this. So it's growing here. I put some wood chips around it now. And then I've got the two system. You know where I put compost in here and kitchen scraps and stuff. I can, I can still lift that bucket, by the way. A tomatillo came up and I thought, how perfect. Look at that. So I've got the tomatillo that is growing in there. And I'll get tomatillos later because they're always late in the season for us. See, they've got tons of flowers, but it takes time. They grow this little ball that's soft and then all of a sudden it gets hard. And when you press it, it's like, oh, there's something in there. And that's when the tomatillos are ready. So it's just perfect. So it's gonna do its thing. In the meantime, the tomato is doing its thing. And then I've got everything else growing in here. And I don't have to be digging up turmeric like I did last time, all the way to the bottom, because turmeric is a very odd plant very different than ginger it grows down so all your rhizomes continue on down it can fill the entire pot to the very bottom of the pot keep that in mind so it's really good if you want to put it in a tall pot ginger on the other hand will grow roots down and these little balls that are not ginger to grow it's just there they have storage roots they will get these white little storage roots but you can't grow them you can eat them We've tried them, they have a mild flavor, but so mild that we don't bother anymore with them. And all the rhizomes grow on, go on the top, so they spread along the top. So this one in here will spread all through here and they'll push and push. They actually like that and they get really big. So they will go down a little bit as they're getting bigger, but they don't grow down where that grows down. I hope you can understand me. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, Go back and check. I have so many videos on growing ginger and turmeric. You'll see the difference on what I'm trying to explain. Oh, yes, I have tomatoes here. You think the squirrel's going to come here and eat this? No, he's going to eat my peppers. Look, a volunteer in the ground, mind you, doing nothing to it. Well, I guess I could be getting some good compost tea out of there. But all in all, it's going real good. And look, we've made a full circle. So that's it. I hope you enjoy this. But this has been a big thing. I get up in the morning. I work in the garden as I'm having my coffee. And I'm thinking about how I want to do this. I want to gut this whole area too. I mean, when I say gut it, I don't, I don't want to take anything out. Had I known we were going to do this, and this was kind of like a spur of the moment thing, had some he people here helping and Gary was getting things done. I looked, I said, I want to cover and we went ahead and they made it and it's just fantastic and i've got see how i have shade i wouldn't have that shade it starts to go into the house and it really is all sunny i have shade so i can set this up and kick back with you have a cup of coffee periodically in the morning and just chit chat with you guys so i'm real excited about this but i want to get this done first and then here i'm just going to clean it up i want to be able to get that chair out and walk that's what I want to be able to do is walk back there, be able to see my dragon fruit, cover my dragon fruit from the birds and move a lot of this out when I'm ready. And I've got to go collect all my walking onions. I'm starting to. I want to grow as many as I can. And gee, I just love them and they're falling all over. And once they hit the ground and fall and there's no water, 
they die back. So keep that in mind. This is too early to pick, though you could. This is too late to pick. So I'm picking it now. This one is very small. There's so many on here that they didn't get, like this got more nutrition than this, so this stayed small. But all these, what I would do right now, there's two things you could do with this. I could cut it and just stick it in a pot with soil, or I could cut it and put it in a little tray with water, and then all of a sudden you'll see these, this little tip here. It will turn green, they'll start to grow. I can snap it apart and grow each one individually, or I could grow it as a cluster. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I gotta call Gary. He's got a little guy that just hatched. Look, look, look. Can you see him? Let's see if we can zoom in. So now we got a bunch of little guineas. Oh, this is, I gotta hide behind. Look, 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 look. And that's Gary's new project. Look at his work area. He's got his glasses for reading. He's got all his notes. He's got his little camera when he wants to take a picture. And um, he's got his thermometer and everything going and he knows exactly what's going on. And then I'll turn here real quick. He's got the big brooder set up. This one is for the older ones. I think they're almost two weeks old. And then he's got the new baby guineas going in that one, which is really nice when you have cardboard. So when you're done, you can either throw it out or compost it. Probably compost it. Look, look. I don't think he knows. Look, look, look. They are so cute. Do you see? That was a surprise. I was just coming in to just grab something to drink and go back into the garden. Look at them. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, he better make a video on this. All because he caught those guineas running up in the wild that somebody dumped for the coyotes. And now he's going to have more. We're not keeping all these. One of my neighbors wants them so bad for the grandkids. They've got twins, so she's getting a bunch. So this is going to be really a lot of fun. Long story on that one. Thank you. Oh my, I could sit here watching them. I don't think I can show you the little ones. We can, let me, let me see real quick. Because when they see me, oh, this is so funny. When they see me, let's see. No, they're inside the brooder. Let me see, I can lift this up for a minute. This brooder, I knew the guys that made it. This is from Marsh Farms. Let me see if we can see. I don't want to disturb them too much. Let's see if I can get my camera in here. Where are you guys? I'm not sure where you are. Nope. Okay, I can't do I need three hands. Nope, can't find you. Oh, you're back there. There's one back there. You can see the feet. Two pairs of feet. Hey. Okay, we're going to go hide on the other side. And then, I have to cover this back, but they can't jump yet. And then we got this one. This is funny. So Gary's got that guinea that he's imprinted on himself. He's, they're hiding now. And when he holds it, it sits there and it does this little, like a, like a cat, you know, it's just so happy. And when I go up and pet it, it's like, ee, 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 ee. it's just screaming. It's like, I don't know where. Boy, did it get imprinted on him. And those are our chickens. He was raising some chickens originally because he wasn't sure how many, there's the guinea back there, see? He wasn't sure how many would hatch or if, you know, what would hatch. And it worked out really good. So there was one guinea in this batch and it was raised with the chickens. He doesn't want the chickens, so they're going to the neighbors. We have enough. He might keep one, I'm not sure. But we have enough chickens, so the neighbor's getting them too. So she'll be getting chickens really soon. Okay, let's cover this back. We don't want anything to happen to it. And that's exciting, because I didn't expect to see this. Look, look at that. Is that not too cute? Oh my goodness, it just came out. You got to see something on the garden tour that I didn't even know was here right now. Well, again, with that, have a great day. Oh my gosh. There's nothing nicer than hatching chickens or any type of bird. It's just amazing. Just real quick, did you know it hatched? No, I didn't. No, I knew it was pip. It was pip this morning. I just found it. I walked in to wrap this up and get something to drink, and I just found it. Look at that. So cute.
You're gonna open it, it won't jump out? No, it won't jump out. It just needs to dry off a little bit before it can be put with the other two. Okay, go ahead and cover it back. Oh, cute. Okay, I'll let you do your thing. I see all your notes. It's like a real work area. It's like an office. Look at that. Just keep track of the eggs. Oh, you're actually keeping the eggshells too? Yep. You will be doing a video for everybody at some point on this, won't at you? At some point, yes. So today's... The, fir uh, the uh, 15th. 15th? The 15th, yep. Whoa. Okay, wave goodbye. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>